SAP HANA is kind of a, a really big picture. So what we're trying to do is taking, getting rid of file systems, databases, we're getting rid of magnetic hard drives from a media, as access media, and as a result, what we basically wind up with computer systems that are extremely high performance, up to 10,000 times faster than what you experience today. Well, yeah, so I've been working with in-memory platforms over many years. The pre-existing pre technology, which was like a live cache, there was a BW accelerators for in-memory processing, but we didn't really put the whole database into memory. We put part of the data instead. This is the logical next progression. So what I've been working on over the years is, since 2006 is basically working on this in-memory processing. And now uh, HANA came about as, as a problem. The relational databases were running too slow. So one of the problems we have was disk. It's spinning magnetic hard drives that are going around as the primary access media for most systems. And what we experience then is that networks are 1,000 times faster. Memory is 6,000 times cheaper than ever out there. Processing powers are no longer like teeny small single cores. They're quad core processors, they're, they're dual cores, they're high speed on them. And as a result, the magnetic drives are now holding us back. They're the slowest thing we have in the computer. So what we had to find a way to get rid of it, and then the next generation, basically your iPhones, your iPads, they took all this stuff and put it in memory. There is no hard drives internally. So people start asking the question, why can't we do the same? Why can't we take the hard drive and basically rip it out of all the computer systems in corporate America, and corporate world, and then put the whole darn thing in memory? And then once we do that, once it becomes solid state memory, then we get all the speed out of the RAM. It, this was not feasible four or five years ago, because four or five years ago, memory was extremely expensive. Today, buying 100 gig or even a terabyte of memory out there is not that expensive. So it's become feasible. Well, it's already doing it. So we have two, two kind of almost two convergence. We have a first part of the convergence, which is the, the stream that's meeting each other. You have consumer electronics. So your iPhone, iPads, your, uh, your memories, your music players, all the consumer electronics has gone to solid state memory already. And that means that memory has become much more reliable. It doesn't crash and burn as much as it used to. At the same time, we have technologies like SAP HANA, who's taking it from the high end, the, the 500 gig, the one terabyte system, up to 100 terabyte systems in memory. Right now, we're squishing the technology in the middle, so the, your laptops and your machines, your PCs, are still using magnetic, magnetic drives and databases and stuff like that. In a very few years, within, I would say, three to five years, I don't think you'd be able to buy a relational uh, database. I don't think you'd be able to buy um, hard drives out there. Everything will be in memory, even this, the center points of the consumer electronics, not just your this, the tablets, but everything in between will also be replaced. And it will happen very fast. It works on several layers. So one thing it works is actually there are, this is the, uh, the little secret, there are hard drives behind the scenes, but they're used for more redundancy in case the memory fails. So memory is extremely reliable. It doesn't really fail very often. I've never experienced it, for instance, but it could happen. And if memory fails on the system, then all of a sudden your system will be gone, gone. So behind the scenes, the way it works is it takes all the data, all the transaction stuff, and runs it in, in resident memory. But it actually copies it to, to a little hard drive behind the scenes, log files and persistent areas. So in case the memory ever fails, there's almost a hot backup running behind the scenes inside the same box. So that's kind of a little secret. Most people think there's absolutely no hard drive. But there are hard drives, but they're only used for backup, almost like a backup and persistent state, persistent layers behind the scenes. So it works basically by no magnetic reader arms, no spinning disks. It reads instantly out of memory cells and out of memory chips, and then it presents the results. So it's uh, anything from calculations, for database fetches, for presenting stuff on the screens, it becomes dramatic. The average query we're seeing is five, seven, four, five, six, seven, seven hundred times faster, and the average operations inside the computer is up to ten thousand times faster. So it's pretty revolutionary. It's not like what we've been doing for twenty years, approving a little bit, approving a little bit, approving a little bit. This is leaps and bounds. Yeah, I think we don't really know. It's almost like 18, 1844. We just invented the steam engine, a workable steam engine, and we don't really know what to use it for. We just now know we can do things we never even dreamt about. 
You could use, for instance, you could build a HANA system and not using it for SAP BW, data warehousing, or transaction system. Maybe you put a HANA system out there and you're just going to load it up with streaming video. You're going to have in-memory videos and with one terabyte of memory, you could load hundreds of videos out there, movies, full high resolution movies, and then streaming it to enormous high number of users. You could, some people have played around with the medical imaging, putting a HANA system in and taking like x-rays and MRIs, things that creates an enormous volume of data that you then need to analyze afterwards and display and play around with and using diagnostic systems. Some people are toying around with that, automatic diagnostics. This could be a system that could be easily used for things like super colliders that collects terabytes of memory, terabytes of data every second they run the super collider. We really don't know how this will change the world. All we're focusing on right now is basically about 800 companies have acquired it for corporate America and corporate world to put their databases like big banks, insurance companies. Uh, um, I worked with some oil companies as well helping implement it. And they are taking all that enormous transaction data and putting it in memory. Companies like Unilever, they generate over 700 million sales transactions every single day. If they want to analyze sales transactions, they're, at the, they're basically at the boundary of what a current computer system can do. So we, it's kind of really opening up a new frontier. Our first one is really focusing on replacing all the old slow systems. Once we've done that, I think the next generation will come up with brilliant ideas how to use the new computing power. And it might be using it in ways we have never even envisioned. Well, this is kind of interesting because the Oracle has made a major push into this as well. <clears throat> Oracle acquired Sun Microsystem, the hardware platform, many years ago. It was about three, four years ago and spent billions of dollars on it. And they, they have a product called Exadata where they are trying very hard to get into this market space as well. And right now there's a little bit of headbutting between SAP and Oracle, like who's the best. I think the reality is there's place for both of them. SAP has a huge footprint within the transaction and data warehouse world for SAP customers, and Oracle has a huge push within their own customer group. So I think there's room for both. What's more interesting is we're seeing six other vendors entering the space, and those are very boutique vendors, small companies, who are coming up with point solution. And the jury's still out if those vendors will survive in the market space. But the dominant force right now are Oracle with their solution, Exadata, and SAP with their solution, which is HANA Appliance. Well, that's interesting. It originated, so this, this has been around the idea of in-memory processing for a very long time, uh, like the, of the idea of doing it, but actual implementation started off with some uh, workers and PhD people over at Stanford. They worked on the algorithms and compressions. Um, SAP started up teaming up with them in year 2006, and then quietly behind the scene had a couple of database projects. They leaked it at a conference in 2009 that they were actually working on this as a, from a historical standpoint. And then last summer, in 2011, the summer, they came up with HANA 1.0, which was the first release. And it was kind of an interim release. It's more, I wouldn't call it a beta release, but it, it didn't do everything we were wanted to do. It just basically took the database system and moved some of the data over and let you run the data faster. Now we're in something we, we used to call HANA version 1.5, and we just renamed it, of course, to confuse people. And what we call it now, it's basically Service Pack 3. What that allows you to do it allows you basically to take all your BW, your reporting analytics systems, and put them straight into memory in HANA, on HANA. So it's been around for the idea of projects for about five, six years, but only in the last year and a half or so have you have something that you can go to, into production with and start using. Now it has been, from a company standpoint, it's been mind-boggling. 800 solution has been sold so far, and that's in a year and a half. So 800 companies have jumped on and said, this is so revolutionary, it's so fast, we got to get it, and we got to get it fast. We can't wait. So that's the fastest technology that has ever been, uh, that I'm aware of, that has ever been adopted into uh, corporations.